Hello, this is Linda from Green Man Ceramics. Uh, today we are going to be doing some glazing the green men from the workshop, the digital workshop that I did previously. So we're going to be using oxides. I've decided to do this um, as a green, a green green man, just using the oxides and a. So these are the oxides here. We've got normally I, I use I use lots of different oxides. Um, this is a. Um, an iron oxide, I can't think what we call them. An iron oxide, this is the one that I use a lot. Uh, I use this to get the brown face of the green men, of which there is an example. Um, I've also got a cobalt oxide that I use for the blue, which I'm going to do the digital workshop one blue. And I have a copper oxide, which I'm going to use today. Uh, so as you can see, it does, the, the water it does separate quite a lot, so you need to give that a bit of a stir before you use it. Um, so, to apply the copper oxide, if you want a really, really dark green, you can, well, you just put more on, basically. If you just want it, if you want it a little bit lighter, put less on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some on and then I'm going to wash it back off again. So when you add it to the leaves, and also if you've got it mixed up in it, you've got quite a bit of water in it. If you don't mix it up so much, it doesn't actually go so dark. So you can just overpower it slightly. But you can see that it's going into the... Usually when I just put it on top like that, you can see it just runs down. It starts running into the veins. That's better like that. I'm emphasising these veins. And then if you add a bit of water to them, so if you don't want it quite as strong, you can just add some water to that, and you're sort of washing it off. So you're washing the you're washing it off the surface a little bit more, but it still stays in the it still stays in the veins. And by adding water, you've got you get a lighter green. You can have it as light as you want, really, by just adding more water and, and then you, you can really see the difference between the between the leaves if i was using um i do this with the copper oxide and the cobalt oxide so if i was doing iron oxide i have a tray and a jug and i would just pour the iron oxide on um, and pull it out of the tray and then i'd get a sponge and water like something like this a sponge and water and I'd actually just wash off the iron oxide with a sponge uh, because it, it's a lot more, it, it absorbs a lot more than this. If you do that with this, some a lot of the time it, it, too much comes off it. So if you want it really, really light, you can actually give it a sponge, but it does, it does actually pull a lot off when you do it that way. And this is why I do it just with the water on the brush. I find it uh, a little bit more controlled. So you, the good thing about using this is it is like an ink. So it runs all over the place, which is great for just getting into the, the fiddly, fiddly little bits. You can actually, you can use, um, see I've not, I've not mixed this now and it's going on a bit more how I want it, I think. The more you mix it, obviously the darker it goes because it's mixing in. Um, you can always go over it. You can mix these oxides together as well. So if you want to experiment, I often put some a little bit of blue on it as well, so you get a bit of a bluey green with it. When it is fired to a high temperature, the, the reason why I do well I, because I've got a lot of glazes that are the terracolor glazes that are mid temperature, so I do just tend to just fire to mid temperature. And with the green men, they, they, they seem to withstand the frost and everything. I've got quite a few outside that are, that are absolutely fine. Um, but when you fire it to a higher temperature, the, 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 you do get a lot of metallic. It does look, end up looking very metallic where you've got a lot on. So where you've got like big clumps of it on, sometimes it turns to metal, which is, which looks really nice. But it is all about experimenting. I've gone around and done all the leaves. The thingy is very handy. You can pick it up and just make sure that you've you've done like the inside of the leaves and stuff like that. But th these leaves are quite low; they're quite close, so I'm not going to bother too much with that. 
but you can just make sure that you go around the the edges as well because it doesn't matter if they, they, this is not going to stick to the kiln as long as you don't have glaze underneath that's fine so I'm just gonna just do the edges and then even if it, they don't have glaze on them it'll still have a little bit of color you can even do this and not, not put any glaze on at all and just end up with a matte finish which I'm actually going to do with the, the blue one okay so then I'm going to do the whole of the face like that as well. I'm actually going to colour the eyes, but it doesn't matter if the oxide goes in because you can just wash it off, but we can try not to get it all over the place. But it is quite nice how it just runs into all the cracks and crevices. Don't forget inside the mouth and the nostrils. It's easy to forget the nostrils. The advantage of, of doing this as well, it is fairly quick. I am, I mean, the, the, the brush on glaze takes a while to put on, but if you've got um if you've got a bucket that you can dip it in or pour, it takes no time at all. So that's that. That should, in theory, that should make a fairly light one, but we'll wait and see. Uh, well, I'll put a picture on it when it when it comes out so that you can actually see what it's like and then you can adjust yours and what you do accordingly okay so it's that's the the oxide put on i'm now gonna i'm just gonna put a little i'm just gonna use the under glazes to color the eyes in a little bit it is suggested that you use two to three layers but if you just want if you don't want it too strong you, you know you, you don't you don't you don't have to uh if you want it a little bit more subtle sometimes it you don't want it looking too blocky And some of the colours show up a lot better than others anyway. I found using the black under glaze you tend not to use. I tend not to bother with two to three layers because it's quite strong. So I'm not fussing too much. So I'm going to put a bit of black in its pupil just to really make that stand out. Or you could actually just use a little bit of... Um, of the oxide, put that in there. I want it to look like a pupil. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to use a couple of different colours for its irises. So I'm going to use a, a blue green and a chartreuse. I think I might even add a bit more. I don't know. I tend to just play around with the colours and just do whatever I fancy doing. That's completely up to you. That's a bit. They do dry out quite a bit. They do dry out quite a bit. Uh, I tend to have a little spray nearby just to add a little bit of water. And the, the actual the pottery tools are really good just for giving it a bit of a stir as well. And just to make sure that it doesn't. I mean, they're in plastic tubs, but they do seem to they do dry out quite easily. Unless I just don't put the lids on. Is a definite possibility. I'm, I'm, I'm really bad with waste as well so I think I'll just use what I've got off there because I only need a bit. I hate wasting it because it's quite expensive. So because I'm using, I'm going to use a couple of different colours so I'm not worrying too much about the, um, how many layers. I like to just experiment with glazing and Oxides anyway. Okay, you can you can just leave them like that if you want, or you could just jazz them up a little bit. So that's a blue green. Oh, blue green. Well, I'll have a look, a little look at this turquoise storm. I might put a bit of a. Oh, this one's a bit dry as well. Paper towel's very handy. And also reusable. I use them until they're in bits.
I'm just going to put a little splodge of another colour in. This is a little rim around the outside, or actually, it, you, I think I might actually do, do it on the inside and then have the darker with a little rim. So I'm just going to put some little... lines around just makes them a bit more interesting if you, you know rather than just using a block colour and then I'm just going to do a few little highlights with this uh, well, I've called it light green it's called Chartreuse which is very jazzy indeed. This is also a bit thick, but I think we'll just go with it. So I'm just going to put a few dabs of... I think because I've got... Um, I've got sort of grey, bluey, greeny eyes with loads of orange flecks in it. So I always feel the need to put flecks in. Mm, jazzy. Uh, so for the little tear duct as well, because I've got a little bit of green in the tear duct, I mean, I could just get rid of that and do it pink, but I, I quite like to just continue the green a little bit into the eye, maybe. Just have it as part of it. Sometimes you can go too far, you know, if you, if you, um, with paint, when you're doing painting and stuff, it, it can end up looking a bit tacky if you don't watch out, so you've got to be careful with that. But I have got, I've got quite into doing the, the eyes a different colour now. Okay, so that's the... The oxide with the um, the eyes painted in, and then all you do then is you just cover the whole thing with a a couple of layers. With this one, I think it's two to three layers. I think this suggests three layers or two to four coats. So you just follow the instructions on it. Really. Two to four coats. Uh, I usually don't have the patience to do four coats, so I usually do a couple. And it depends how shiny you want it as well. If you just want a little bit of a glaze on it, you could just do a couple of coats. If you want it really really shiny do for um, and I usually do the eyes first just to make sure that you don't get the oxide into the eyes and mess all the colours up and stuff so I've just started by just covering the eyes and then I'm just gonna start brushing on all over the face Actually, top tip, what I'd do normally, because this is because we're using oxide, if you're dipping it in and out, in and out all the time, you end up getting oxide in there, in your glaze. So I always pour it into a, I decant it, decant it into another tub, which I almost forgot. But it is very important, otherwise you end up with oxide all over your glaze and you can't use it for other stuff. So I'm just going to... Cover the whole thing then and I don't do an even layer I, I don't mind if it puddles and as long as it's not dripping everywhere so this is why it says it says two to four coats but you know that's if you're doing nice little even coats and stuff and for those of you that know me you know that I'm just a maverick <laughs> just lazy no, I'm, it's not even laziness really, I, I'm just really impatient. But there's not room wrong with doing it your own way. Because you end up then with your own style and your own your own look to things. So that's the first layer. I'm going to leave that to dry for a little while. I'll just leave it to dry so it's dried properly. Uh, and then I'm going to put another layer on top of that. So um, this is the finished green man. It's come out of the kiln uh, after being fired at 1200 degrees centigrade, so it's suitable for outdoors. Uh, as you can see, the green oxide has come out quite light, uh, except for where it's sunk into the, the veins um, there, which is, gives it a really nice contrast with the leaves. Uh, the eyes have worked really well as well. Uh, it's not massively shiny. It's fairly shiny, actually. It's sort of got a little bit of a wet look to it. So that this is with two coats of um, of glazer asked for two to four coats. Uh, so if you wanted it shiny, just add a little bit more glaze. 
Um, but all in all, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Uh, so happy glazing, everybody. And if you want to see any more of what I do, you can find me on Facebook at Green Man Ceramics or greenmanceramics.com is my website.